Earlier, I have already explained the concept of a quantization. Quantization reduces the precision of a parameters. Quantization is a way to reduce the execution time, also reduce the requirement for memory. Because by reducing the precision, we can use fewer bits to store the parameters. Quantization is so important, and the PyTorch supports quantization. This lecture will provide an introduction of a PyTorch's features for quantization. Let's review why we want to use quantization. A commonly used method for quantization reduces 32-bit 14-point numbers by 8-bit integers. In neural networks, we rarely use 64-bit 14-point numbers. 32-bit single precision 14-point numbers are much more common. When we quantize the 14-point values, we can quantize to different type of precisions. The 8-bit integer is the most common way to do quantization. When we reduce each number from 32 bits to 8 bits, we can reduce memory requirement by 75%. The memory bandwidth can be reduced by 50 to 75%. Memory bandwidth is defined as the amount of data passing between the interface of a memory and the processor in a unit amount of time. This value is not exactly 75%, because the processor needs some data that is not parameters. For example, the input images. Reducing the size of a parameter by 75% does not mean we reduce the overall memory bandwidth by 75%. Also, bandwidth is divided by time. If less data is needed and the computation is faster, the processor may need more data in the same amount of time. That's another reason the bandwidth reduction is less than 75%. Quantization can also reduce execution time significantly, often by more than 50%. In PyTorch, quantization models are traceable and scritable. Moreover, it is possible to misquantize and 14-point operations in a model. PyTorch supports three types of quantization we have already seen than before. Here, I also provide PyTorch's commands for these types. The first type is dynamic quantization. 14-point variables are stored in memory. These variables are converted into integer before computation. In PyTorch, the function is torch quantization quantize underscore dynamic. Dynamic quantization can be helpful because the computation requires only integer. Therefore, the computation can be faster. The second type of quantization is called static quantization. This requires more work. Observers are inserted into the neural networks. Observers record the distributions of the parameters and then determine how to quantize the parameters. PyTorch also offers the feature of uh, operator fusion. This combines several operations into one and then can reduce memory accesses. Here are some of the functions provided by PyTorch. Torch quantization prepare is used for observers. Torch quantization fuse underscore module can fuse modules. The actual quantization uses the function torch quantization convert. The third type of quantization is called quantization aware training. We frequently see the acronym QAT. For this work, 14 point is used in training, but the forward path is quantized. The reason is to maintain the 14 point precision so that backpropagation can still work. If we actually use integers, 
for training, it is very likely that the gradient difference is too small and it can be quantized to zero. When the gradient difference is zero, we cannot train the neural network. Therefore, we have to keep the precision in the 14 point. The PyTorch function, torch quantization, prepare, QAT, can be used to quantize the parameters. After training, torch quantization converts is used to actually quantize the parameters. At this moment, quantized operators are supported only for CPU inference, not for GPU. Here are a few examples using different types of quantization. The factors for consideration include speed, accuracy requirements, and the supported operators. First, let me explain these models. LSTM is long short-term memory. RNN is recurrent neural network. BERT is bidirectional encoder representations from transformers. All of them are neural networks used for natural language processing. These machine models can use dynamic quantization because the throughput is dominated by computation and the memory bandwidth. These machine models are different from convolutional neural networks because these models are designed to process sequences of data in natural languages. In particular, the relationships among words. In the last case, a convolutional neural network uses quantization-aware training because the accuracy cannot be achieved using static quantization. This slide shows some numbers. The slide compares three different machine models, BERT, ResNet, and MobileNet. The models run on different hardware. The performance improvements are shown in the slide. For BERT, the performance in terms of latency almost doubles by dynamic quantization. For ResNet, using static quantization, the performance is slightly better than double. For MobileNet, using static quantization, the performance improvement is pretty significant from 97 milliseconds to 17 milliseconds. Shorter latency is better. This slide shows the accuracy for the 14-point parameters and the quantized parameters. All of them show slight degradation in accuracy. Most of them use static quantization. One uses quantization-aware training. One uses dynamic quantization. It is noticeable that MobileNet V2 uses quantization-aware training and the accuracy still drops a little. PyTorch offers two types of quantization. The first is called eager mode, and the second is the FX graph mode. In the eager mode, most things are manual. In the FX mode, many things can be automated. Both modes support Static quantization, dynamic quantization, and quantization aware training. Let me show you some code snippets of PyTorch's support for quantization. This is an example using the eager mode dynamic quantization. The program calls torch quantization quantize underscore dynamic for quantization. This function takes up to five arguments. The first is a model. In this example, model underscore FP32 is a model of a, a linear layer. The next argument specifies how to quantize. In this example, it is a linear function. The next argument is the target data type. Here, it is 8-bit integer. Two more optional arguments are mapping and in place. The default variable for them is none and false. The next example is eager mode 
quantization aware training. This example creates a model that includes the torch quantization quant stop module. This is the first function called in the forward function. Before training, it is necessary to set the training mode. This model uses the FBGEMN for the configuration. FBGEMN is a library for tensor matrix calculation using the Intel x86 instruction set. PyTorch supports two configurations. The first is the FBGEMN we have seen. The second is QNNPACK library for the ARM instruction set. The next statement uses fuse underscore modules to fuse the operations for convolution, batch normalization, and the redo function. The function quantization prepare underscore QAT inserts observers for the weights and activation. Then the program enters the training loop. Here are some common mistakes from the PyTorch documentation. PyTorch does not allow saving a quantized model directly. If you do that, this is the error message. If you want to fix it, you can see PyTorch's documentation. Also, you cannot mix quantized tensor with non-quantized kernel. These are the error messages. If you want to know how to fix the problem, please look at PyTorch's documentation.